Welcome friends, back to Hot News. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. Hope you're gearing up for whatever you're gonna be doing for this holiday week. If you're in the United States for Thanksgiving, if you're in the rest of the world, you don't get no freedom in Turkey, all right? I remember trying to celebrate Thanksgiving in South Africa. It was a nightmare trying to find a turkey at the local grocery store. They have turkeys, they just don't sell them for me. It wasn't, ah, uh, okay, well, I get, they're everywhere now. Let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is going to be Displate dope metal prints that are on the wall behind me. Yes, my friends, they mount with magnets, easy to swap in and out. They plant 10 trees for every display that you buy. And if you use the link in the video description, display.com forward slash UFD tech official and use coupon code UFD, you save 15% off of your purchase, which they're gonna be running a bunch of sales, but you got things such as the official cyberpunk licensing, you got things such as Weeby stuff, you got hard drive blueprints, you got tech stuff, you got nature stuff, you got whatever you want, whatever your heart desires to express on your wall, you can do that now with display. So go ahead and check that out, the link in the video description. And then secondly, we're gonna talk about uh, a bunch of stuff that's going on. Obviously, Black Friday is gonna be occurring this week, but we've got deals going on in between now and then. Uh, and today's deal that I just wanted to highlight that I found while researching for hot news today is the Razer Phone 2 is currently $300 over on Amazon. 120 hertz, 1440p display, 5.72 inches, Snapdragon 845, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. There's a lot of good about this phone and for $300, dollars unlocked dang that's just phenomenal for me 120 hertz eight gigs of ram wireless for 300 dollars smartphone yes please we'll leave an amazon affiliate link in the video description if you want to check that out anyways let's go ahead and jump on into the main bit of news which is something that uh was discussed last week but i didn't really have time to cover it in our revival of hot news back here in the united states and that is there's some information coming out or rumors being spread about about NVIDIA's next next generation of graphics cards. The next generation of graphics cards after the RTX 20 series is supposed to be codenamed Ampere, and that should be releasing sometime uh, in 2020 and on the seven nanometer process. This is gonna be NVIDIA's first uh, foray into seven nanometers, which of course AMD is already on with their Navi series of cards. After that, however, we're supposed to be getting what is codenamed Hopper, and that supposedly is after Grace Hopper, who was an eminent computer scientist who worked on programming the Harvard Mark I computer, as well as inventing one of the first linkers. So Grace Hopper, a great name to name an architecture after, but the biggest thing isn't the name, but rather what's coming out about the type of architecture. One of the things that AMD was rumored to be working on for Navi was multi-chip modules, basically something that AMD did for their Ryzen series of processors, having multiple cores that you then can connect via an IO die. It has been discussed by NVIDIA directly that they are indeed working on multi-chip modules just for scientific purposes and not necessarily something for GPUs. But with Hopper, it could potentially be unveiled sometime in 2021 or 2022 for the supercomputing crowd and make its way down to mainstream computer technology after that. So multi-chip module graphics cards for all intents and purposes would allow NVIDIA to produce more powerful graphics cards cards and do that so more efficiently because they don't have to waste as much chip manufacturing. They can actually merge them together and then get more powerful chips from that. And one of the arguments against this has always been that NVIDIA and AMD have just been dropping multi-GPU support. However, there's been information that came out last week regarding something called CFR by NVIDIA, which they were going to be implementing, also known as checkerboard frame rendering, which is something that was discussed when Crossfire and SLI were first unveiled that one GPU would render one part of the frame and the second GPU would render a second part of the frame. And it was discussed how NVIDIA was going to be dropping this tile-based rendering. And that has officially come out as of Saturday. It was discovered that NVIDIA secretly implemented this into their drivers so that you can actually enable this in multiple modes of DX10, DX11, and DX12, where you can change the SLI rendering mode to checkerboard rendering and there's a bunch of games that currently work with it, but of note, there's Metro Exodus, there's Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Hitman 2, all kind of work with this new checkerboard rendering that NVIDIA is rolling out. It seems to be more efficient, but then that also gives credence to the fact that NVIDIA may indeed be working on something that AMD was supposed to roll out initially, but looks like NVIDIA is gonna drop it first, which is the multi-chip GPUs. Not something like the GTX 590, something a bit more similar to a Ryzen core, but on a 
GPU manufacturing setup. So that's the good news is that hopefully that'll be coming sometime in 2021 after we get Ampere next year. And then also last week, NVIDIA dropped their information regarding their Q3 results. They're doing basically all right. And one of the big things that came out of that, not with the Q3 earnings specifically about how much money they're making, but rather Jensen's comments regarding just how successful ray tracing graphics cards are, specifically saying overall for PC gaming, RTX is doing fantastic. Let me tell you why it's so important. I would say that at this point, I think it's fairly clear that ray tracing is the future and that RTX is a home run. Just about every major game developer has signed on to ray tracing. Even the next generation consoles had to stutter step and include ray tracing in their next generation of consoles. That's a big statement by Jensen. Obviously, NVIDIA has first rights to implementing real-time ray tracing hardware into their graphics cards, and so they could say that they were first to do it, to implement the actual dedicated hardware. But at the same time, I doubt that AMD had reconfigured its plans. This is probably something that was in development. They just didn't get the first jump on it. They had to actually work on implementing it first and make sure that it could work. NVIDIA got the first launch, and thereby they can say that they were first in AMD's copy being them? Sure. Do you think that consoles having ray tracing is a response to NVIDIA? Or do you think it's something that it was in plan all along and NVIDIA just got the jump on them? Let me know down in the comments. But also there's rumors floating around last week that we should be getting an RTX 2080 Ti Super. This is coming after the fact that there was no 2080 Ti Super when the 2080 Super launched a few months ago. This presumably would because there would be no differentiation between the Titan RTX and the 2080 Ti Super, but apparently Nvidia doesn't care about that. They didn't care about that with the Pascal generation. So RTX, another another high-end graphics card, it's probably gonna cost 15, 1200 to $1,500 and just be slightly better. Is that what you wanted? Is this what you wanted? Well, I know what you did want though, is the next generation of NVIDIA's G-Sync modules, which actually isn't as boring as it sounds because it appears that the next generation of G-Sync modules will open up to other variable refresh rate technologies, such as Adaptive Sync and HDMI VRR, which would allow them potentially to use AMD graphics cards on G-Sync actual G-Sync monitors. This is basically the flip side of what NVIDIA did earlier this year, which was to allow NVIDIA cards to use FreeSync monitors. Now they're allowing AMD cards to use G-Sync monitors in the future. It's not quite rolled out yet. And primarily one of the reasons that I saw speculated for this was the fact that the next generation of consoles will prob probably take great use of this, playing at 240 Hertz. Not really, 120 Hertz, you have variable refresh rate, then you get you know, your PlayStation 5 with a G-Sync monitor, NVIDIA makes money off of AMD's hardware. It's exactly what they want in life. And what I want in life is peace. And we're not getting that because Apple and NVIDIA are continually at war. In case you don't know the story, NVIDIA basically pissed off Steve Jobs and Steve Jobs was like, okay, we're going for AMD for the rest of our life. And Apple has basically officially dropped support for NVIDIA products officially in whatever they do. You can still use NVIDIA products via Hackintoshing and all of that. But in a tit for tat scenario on Monday, NVIDIA published the release notes for their CUDA 10.2 toolkit and NVIDIA driver, which basically says that this is the last driver that is going to officially support Mac OS. And if you want to use CUDA drivers in the future, you can't. So suck it, which is just basically how life is going to be. This obviously could hurt a lot of people who are utilizing RTX hardware and want to use that in high end desktop scenarios. For the normal person who uses Mac, it doesn't mean anything. You're still on an AMD graphics card. So who cares? And then let's go ahead and talk about something that I didn't talk about in Friday's hot news just because we recorded it before it was officially announced, and that is the Tesla Cybertruck. This is a polarizing truck that is out on the internet that is more armored personal carrier than it is truck, as stated by Elon himself. But there's a whole bunch of good stuff coming out on the internet about this even after the official announcement of this thing. First off is that Elon Musk on Twitter has now announced that there have been officially 200,000 pre-orders for this truck, which makes it basically the second most sold truck right now, right behind the Ford F-150. So 200,000 pre-orders, but one of the reasons why the pre-order number is probably so huge is because it's a refundable $100 deposit for something that's coming out at the end of 2021. 
I put $100 down just to reserve it. I don't know if I'm gonna need this truck. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford it in two years, but guess what? It's refundable and if I can't, there's actually no harm, no foul for me to be able to do this. And presumably based on that 200,000 pre-order amount, that's potentially up to $10 billion in revenue for Tesla. And this basically goes in the face of all the articles that you read regarding, nobody's gonna wanna buy this. No real truck person's gonna use this Cybertruck. It's too ugly. It looks like the Warthog from Halo. It's awful. But then it has 200,000 pre-orders and now the argument shifts from nobody's gonna wanna buy it to Tesla actually can't keep up with the demand, which fun fact, they will not be able to. They only hit 200,000 total cars sold in July of 2018. They sold about 200,000 Model 3s this year or delivered 200,000 Model 3s this year. I believe that's the figure as of September. So they're producing roughly 300 to 500,000 cars a year that I don't see them adding another 200,000 unless they announce another gigafactory in the United States, but that's neither here nor there. What is here is that if you want to pre-order one, you can use our Tesla referral code down below in the, the link and then you get free supercharger miles. And so do I, if I get a Cybertruck two years out, refundable $100. Might as well, right? Then a little a few quick things. NZXT has updated their CAM software to the new 4.0. They're saying that their software has been redesigned from the ground up to give you more features, but also to simplify uh, the resources that it uses on your computer and make sure that it's not dragging everything down. So in case you wanna check that out, it's now out. And then Half-Life Alex, while it was announced last week, got a release date in March, 2020, which I think is bullcrap valve because that is just a jam-packed set of time. I have to play Final Fantasy VII Remake and then I have to move Move on to freaking Cyberpunk 2077. I don't have time to get immersed into a Half-Life game. Stop. You knew this. You knew everybody else's release date. Move it to the later in the year. Gosh dang it. And then OnePlus apparently has been breached in yet another data hack. Last year in 2018, they announced that they had 40,000 users who had their credit card payment information stolen. This time it doesn't look like any payment information was stolen, but personal information was, although they haven't disclosed the total amount of people that have been affected by this, but it doesn't look like OnePlus's security is quite uh, where it needs to be. And then Microsoft finally got permission from the US government to start selling its software back to Huawei, presumably for for Microsoft Office and all of that good stuff. Google still doesn't have that license, so Android still cannot be used on Huawei's phones unless you install them via third party and it's super easy to do, it's barely an inconvenience, but uh, it is just a plight on Huawei selling their Android smartphones with no Google apps. And then, did you want an Intel gamepad to play video games with? I didn't either, but apparently there is a patent filed in China for it and it has symmetrical Joy-Con analog sticks. I hate it so much. It looks too futuristic, symmetrical crap. Speaking of symmetrical crap, Stadia has finally confirmed that they shipped out all of their Stadia codes that were supposed to be there for day one access by the second day. Good job, Google. Proud of you, way to screw everything out. All the invite codes for the Founders Edition are now out. Pre-orders and access codes for the Premiere Edition should be shipping next week. So in case you order a Premiere Edition, get, get holding your horses on that one. I don't know. There's also been like some rumors that Stadia is burning out people's Chromecast Ultras. Haven't seen a lot of merit to it. Seems like anecdotal stuff that's going on on Reddit. But in case that's a worry of yours, don't play too much Stadia or don't play it at all. I enjoy it. Okay, that's. I think I'm gonna differ from everybody out on the internet. Maybe it's not the future of gaming, but it's enjoyable. Okay, and for $70 for the controller, for the free version where you buy a game, I'll, I'll do it. I'll play the game, I'll, I'll, yes. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News. Thank you so much for watching this one, this Monday edition on this holiday week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check out Display at the link in the video description. Also, if you're uh, checking out that Razor phone, use our Amazon affiliate link as well. And that's gonna be it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. We've got some stuff going on this week. Uh, especially regarding Black Friday. There's gonna be a lot of deals coming out, so we'll try to keep you posted on those. Uh, and I'm out of here, I'm Brett, bye. Forgot to turn the audio recorder on again.